and welcome back to The Zest. I'm your host, Teju. I'm so excited about today's episode. We have an action-packed informational episode with Brittany Ford, who is also known as Biohacking Brittany, and she's going to talk about everything uh, related to biohacking and diet and your gut flora, all important, incredible topics. Um, you know, we'll dive deep into some nutrition hacks and she'll share her journey as well. So without further ado, Brittany, I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you for joining the show today. Awesome. Yeah, I'm so excited to be here. Uh, thank you for having me. Yes, of course, of course. Now, I love following everything that you're doing. And, you know, as we were just chatting about biohacking, something that I'm super interested in. Yeah. I would love to hear your story. How did you get into nutrition? How did you even get into biohacking? Um, walk us through your journey and how you got to where you are. For me, and like most healthcare practitioners, um, it really started with my own health issues that I was having. And this was about 10, 11 years ago, um, where I was dealing with symptoms and signs that I couldn't necessarily figure out with my doctor. Mm -hmm. And so even though we did blood work together and we did different tests, I wasn't really getting the answers I was looking for. Um, so some of the symptoms and signs that I was dealing with was like low energy, trouble focusing in school, my hair was falling out and I was a teenager. And so it was thinning and it really like drove me to look outside of the conventional medical uh, institutes and doctors that we have because they weren't giving me any answers and they said nothing was wrong. Um, but I knew better. And so it kind of went down this journey of looking at naturopaths and talking to naturopaths and nutritionists and doing different testing and figuring out what was going on on a deeper level with my health and then how to heal it. Right, and then during right. that, it was kind of this like new passion and love that started to form. And I just fell in love with natural health and healing with the earth and healing through natural means. And slowly but surely started to make a career out of it, started working at clinics, working with naturopaths. Uh, I finished university. I went back to school again, studied to be a nutritionist um, and then found biohacking. And the biohacking piece kind of comes into it because even though by trade, I am a registered holistic nutritionist, I found that it wasn't necessarily enough when healing myself and helping my clients heal. So mm -hmm. only looking at nutrition wasn't, yeah, it just wasn't enough. Like I needed to assess lifestyle and stress and sleep and your environment and all of these other things that was really impacting people's health and my own health. And that's kind of how I found biohacking a few years ago is this idea of like holistic health, right? Trying to change your like different aspects of your life and health in order to be healthy um, and prevent issues from coming in the future. So that's kind of what I do now and kind of how it all came together over the last years, like few years right. um, and what I find that works for me and for my clients. Now, one of the things I think is so interesting is the biohacking mindset, you know, the approach to mm -hmm. testing and, you know, kind of figuring out what works for you. Walk us through that and like, you know, really for define for our, our uh, viewers, what is biohacking and what is the process that you need to mm -hmm. go to, to kind of get to a place where you're finding that, you know, sweet spot of food and, you know, medicine, stress, whatever it may be right. in order to be your optimal self. So I find my definition of biohacking is holistic self-care for optimal health. Mm. And that is exactly what I was saying is like, so holistic self-care, right? So we're looking at your stress and your relationships and your work and your environment and nutrition and all of these other things that really make you, you. And then the goal is to optimize them to right. reach this level of optimal health and perfect health does not exist. And which is something that I struggled with learning, right? Like every single human on the planet has had health issues and there's no perfect person who is mentally healthy and physically healthy and their blood work, everything is perfect. Like it's just not possible. Right. But you can improve a lot of the things that you're dealing with. And so that's kind of what biohacking is, is like it's the holistic part and it's improving it. And you improve it through kind of what you're saying, this idea of quantifying yourself. Mm. So 
doing tests and using different tools and techniques. And there's a lot of tech now too, that you can get as well, where you're measuring different things um, and then kind of changing things in your day to see what impacts those levels. So for example, is like, I have an aura ring, which you can see, and this basically checks your activity in your sleep, right? right? So if I am like, okay, my REM sleep is very low, which is the phases of your sleep where you dream the most. Right. Right. And I start, you know, reading before bed or going to bed earlier or turning off the lights when the sun goes down or doing these different little tweaks, then I can look at my data and say, okay, what improved that? Did my REM increase when I did these different things? What about a supplement? What about trying magnesium? And it's like trying these different things to, uh, once again, like improve your health. And it's cool now. It's, it's, you know, there's two parts to it. There's the, the tech and the data and the tools that are very, very new and coming out every single year. We're learning more and more about the body. Um, but there's also the intuitive part, right? So intuitively we can feel, okay, did I sleep really well last night? Did I, am I waking up refreshed? Am I feeling like today I can do what I need to do? Or am I like slowly pulling myself out of bed and struggling and needing five coffees and hitting burnout at 3 p.m., right? Right. right. So there's those two parts of it, and it's kind of cool how they collide. Um, and that's really what the biohacking world is all about. I love that. I lo- it's almost like you're, you know, like the surrendered scientist, if that makes sense. Like you're surrendering to like the fact that there's a bunch of data and feedback, um, and not judging yourself, you know, but saying, you know, getting curious and saying, okay, cool. I'm learning. And now like, what can I do in order to move to the next place and the next place and the next place. And it's this continuous journey, which is really, really cool. Talk to me a little bit more about some of the tools you mentioned tools and methodology, and there's a lot of tech, Mm. Uh, you have the aura ring. What are some yeah. other things that you use? What are some of the tools that you've got in your toolbox that really help you to optimize and quantify? Yeah, yeah, definitely. So a big thing that I've been doing in the last six months or so is a lot of different testing. So I had my DNA tested for the first time. And of course, like you can't change your DNA, right? right. Um, but getting your DNA tested and then looking at it and saying, okay, like, based on these gene variations I have, I don't do very well with detoxing. So what can I do to help my body detox more? Or I don't do very well with lactose or gluten or, um, you know, hormonal imbalances or mental health. Like there's so many things that you can get tested now with your DNA, um, which has been very interesting for me to dive into and then make tweaks and then see the results in my life and see how things may improve. All right. Quick question. Where did you get your DNA tested? I'm just curious. And how did you do that? Yeah. Yeah. So I did it through a company called DNA power. Okay. Um, you can go on their website. They're great. And they test for so many different things. So they do your diet, they do your fitness, they do your mental health, they do your hormones, your detoxing, um, they don't do any of the big things like cancer or anything like that, right, right. but they do a lot of the uh, things that impact your day every day. And so that has been very, very interesting for me to learn and, and apply those changes to my life and to my diet or whatever I was doing and see results. Right. Um, because without the data, right? Like as much as we can rely on intuition, and I think there's a lot to be said about that right. without the actual data of like your DNA tested, how are you going to know if you actually don't do as well with detoxing or you don't do as well with um, a specific hormonal imbalance or whatever it may be, right? I think there's a really good time and place for the data to come in. And with the availability of it now, we should really be um, grabbing it and trying to use it and for, you know, to become healthier. Right. Right. Super cool. I'm going to have to look into that DNA power. That's really interesting. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. cool. Other tools or, you know, and do you have like a methodology like, Hey, I'm going to Mm. measure, you know, these things for two weeks and then, then I'm going to make X, Y, Z tweak. Um, you know, walk me through that a bit. Personally for me, like I, 
depends what the symptom is. So for example, if I'm dealing with, uh, irregular menstrual cycles, right? right? I have an app that tracks my cycle and I can very much see what's going on there. Right. But if I'm trying a new supplement or I'm trying to, uh, eat more regularly throughout the day to balance my hormones better throughout the day. So it balances my sex hormones. I'll just put a note on my phone and start writing down what I'm eating, mm. uh, and try it out for a few weeks something like a menstrual cycle, you really got to try out for a couple months to have an impact. Um, But something like your skin, like people who get acne or uh, eczema or something like that, like you can try out something and keep notes of it for a couple weeks and and just look at the symptom, like look and see if it's getting better. Um, it, It depends on the type of person you are, I think for the, for the methodology for this. Right. For sure. For sure. And figuring out what yeah. works for you. And I think what's sustainable, yeah. you know, as well, uh, mm-hmm. I think sometimes yes. people feel like they need to ascribe yeah. to, you know, what works for one person and they're tracking every day, or, you know, they're like a person that's already into quantified self and they, ha- you know, that may not work for, I know for me personally, like I'm an old fashioned journal mm. person and I just need yeah, to like, write things there down you go. <laughs> and that's what works for me you know so I, I think it's yeah as you're saying whatever works for the individual that's yes. sustainable yeah. um you know for the person talk to me a little bit about um you know one of the things I always get asked and we hear a bunch is about our gut flora um you know how to mm. maintain our microbiome um you know really why that's important Walk us through, first of all, what, what is that? Define that for our, our um, yeah. viewers. And then why is it so important? And what are some things that we can do to make sure that we do have, you know, a healthy gut for us? Yeah. So, you know, gut health in itself is so trendy now. It's so popular, um, which is great, which, which, you know, we weren't at 10 years ago. So it's, it's really nice to see. Um, but the gut microflora is basically describing all of the different bacteria you have living in the intestinal uh, digestive tracts that we have of where all of our food and water and substances go through. So in, in our digestion, in our gut, there's a ton of bacteria. And the way that someone described it to me once was basically saying that with, if you picture your gut on the inside, it's like a rainforest. Mm. If you think of the Amazon rainforest, think about how many different plants, trees, bugs, animals, everything that lives in the Amazon rainforest. Like you can't even count because there's just so many and it's amazing. Right. And it's just like, so, so diverse. And that is the same principle when it comes to our gut. It's very, very, very diverse. And that's a very good thing. So we want, we want a strong, healthy, diverse gut. Um, And so there's a lot we can do to kind of help that, Uh, you know, and people know about probiotics and now prebiotics and these different things. Um, But but really, we just want to keep it diverse and and growing every day and changing every day. Right. Absolutely. Are there any, you know, probiotics and prebiotics, but what about food Mm. that we could actually eat Mm. that really help us maintain and, you know, help our digestion or gut flora as well? Yeah. So typically with clients, uh, and myself, I, before I recommend probiotics and prebiotics and supplements, we can take a step back and use food to help us just like you're saying. And fermented food does that. Mm. So things like sauerkraut, things like kombucha, kimchi, uh, pickles, uh, pickled carrots, pickled onions, anything like that, that has that like sour flavor. Um, even sourdough bread, has healthy bacteria in it, right? So it's kind of bringing in those every day. And so a good rule of thumb is try to eat something fermented once a day, Mm. even if it's like a homemade burger with a little bit of sauerkraut on it, or you have a small glass of kombucha once a day or something like that. um, That's a really good rule of thumb because you're giving your body new bacteria uh, to work with and you're helping diversify the gut. 
I love that. That's a great challenge. It's like the like one a day fermented challenge, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I love yeah, that. there you go. That's awesome. Yeah, it's like yeah. our new channel. Maybe that'll be one of the challenges we launch. <laughs> <laughs> I love, you know, I do um, kimchi a ton. Kimchi. Nice. And, good. Good for you. Um, you know, sauerkraut. And I like that. Luckily, I yeah. like that stuff already. So, but it really, nice. me, it's helped me a ton and clearing up you know, some of my own like digestive and health issues that I had this, you yeah. know, that shift was huge for me personally. Um, so yeah. Love to know, like, what, like, what, what do you do? I mean, you're glowing and fabulous. Mm. Like, what do you do oh. in terms of like, <laughs> you know, food and, and, you know, healthy living practices, you know, maybe narrate us through a day. Um, yeah. What you do. Oh my goodness. How much time do you have? Yeah. Um, I just like, I, have, I feel like I do so much. Um, I, in terms of nutrition, I, I don't follow any specific diet. Um, I really just try and eat whole foods right. as least processed as possible. So uh, another good rule of thumb that I always recommend is, is your, is your fridge more full than your pantry? right? Mm -hmm. You want your fridge full of right. vegetables, nuts and seeds, fruit, um, high quality animal proteins, eggs, whatever it is. And then your pantry should be like spices and maybe some, you know, crackers, but it's not full of like cereal and chips and cookies and all these types of things. Right. 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 Um, so that's kind of what I do nutrition wise is I really just try and eat actual real food that has one ingredient or one or two ingredients in it compared right. to uh, something that comes in a package. Right, right. Um, and then in terms of like biohacking my day, it changes, right? So in the week, it's quite different from the weekends. So the week I will do things like cold therapy, a sauna, uh, red light therapy, mm. uh, coffee enemas sometimes, um, meditation. There's, there's a whole bunch of different tools that I pull on. Right. Um, and it's gotten to the point where I have so many things that I've tried and little tools and gizmos around my house, um, that I now have this, I created this, I created this like one pager that I use and it's a little checklist every day. And I try and do, I think there's like five things on there. Um, I try to get all five in, in a day, but if I don't, that's fine. Um, but it helps me to actually do things, you know, repetitively throughout the weeks because otherwise I forget and there's too much going on and then I'm working right. too much. Right. Um, so that helps me. And so, but again, like it depends what's going on. Right. So I was just visiting my family for two weeks in Ontario and I drank a lot of alcohol. I ate food. I don't normally eat. I slept less. We got a puppy, so I'm tired. Mm -hmm. So this week, it's not necessarily about like going to the gym and lifting more weight, you know, that kind of like what I was doing before this week, it's like, okay, saunas, coffee enemas, we got to detox, we got to clean out the body and kind of settle back in. Right. So right. It, it really depends on what you're dealing with, what symptoms you're dealing with, how you're feeling. Um, and then I kind of pull on these different things that I have. And because I've been doing it for so long, I know, I know what to do, right? Like I know what I need. I know what is going to work and help me feel better. And that's exactly what I coach my clients on is like creating this toolbox of things that you can use to feel good um, and, and do that exact same thing and like pull on when you need them. Right. You mentioned two things that I, you know, I've, I've heard a ton about, but I personally have not done myself. Yeah. Red light therapy and coffee enemas. I have so yeah. many friends. They're like posting on Instagram <laughs> and they're talking about it. Walk me uh, through what they are and why, you know, how they've helped you and why, you know, why you, you do them. The red light therapy is becoming very popular. Um, basically it is like the ones that I have are like this device. that's like this big. It hangs from my door in my bathroom and I typically like to stack different hacks with it. So I'll actually stand in front of it and meditate at the same time. Um, yeah. And so it really helps with skin. Um, basically there's different wavelengths and the different light does different things for your skin. Mm -hmm. And we typically don't get as much red light as we did, you know, back when we were hunter gatherers, that type of thing. 
Um, but a lot of people have seen a lot of benefits from it, right? So it can help with acne, it can help with scarring, can help with anti-aging, like all of these different things. Um, so for skin wise is, is typically why I do red light therapy. Um, and then also, although I've used it for other things as well, but right now that's what I do use it for. Um, and then the coffee enemas is very interesting because I get so many people who ask me about them, um, you know, because it's a coffee enema and people are just interested in right. stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's something that I used to do a couple years ago and then I stopped. And then again, like after I got my genes tested and they basically showed me that my detoxification is like mediocre, whereas like I don't have all the variants, but I have about half of them. So I, I, it's not terrible, but it's not great. And ever, ever since I found that out, I've really been focusing on how to just support my body for detoxing better, right? So whether it's a sauna um, or going to the gym more or yoga or these things that help sweat and, you know, detox the body. Um, and coffee enemas is another thing for that, right? right? So the coffee, when it's put in your colon, it helps stimulate the liver. Right. And the liver is one of the most important detoxifying organs that we have. And so through that, I'm able to get out the toxins faster and cleaner than I would otherwise. And because we live in such a toxic world now, yeah. um, in terms of food and environment and the air and plastic and all of these things, I really want to make sure that I can help my body in any way that I can. Um, and I've seen good results from it. So I try and do it, you know, once or twice a week. Okay. Interesting. Very, very interesting. Mm -hmm. What are some of your like health obsessions? Like what are some things that right now you're like, this is, this is awesome. This is a game changer. I'm super excited about, yeah. about that. In terms of right now, I, <laughs> I started microdosing with psilocybin, which has been very interesting. Oh, tell um, me more about that. So I don't know if you know what psilocybin is, but um, it's basically the active ingredient in mushrooms. Like, mm -hmm. you know how people will take mushrooms and like yeah. trip yeah. out or whatever. Right, right. right. Um, so it's a very like Silicon Valley thing. Um, and I had a company reach out and send me some, uh, microdosing supplements a while ago. Right. And I started taking those. I did, I did it a couple weeks ago and I'm going to do it again this week. Um, but basically it's a small, a small enough amount that you don't hallucinate or you don't trip out at all or anything like that. It just stimulates different parts of your brain that you're not typically using and it's really great for creativity and productivity. Right. So a lot of entrepreneurs in the biohacking space, like myself, will use it to um, help with the business, right? So when I've taken it, I felt a lot of clarity, a lot of focus, mm -hmm. um, but not, not like a coffee focus where you feel a little jittery and a little right. hyper, Right. just right. more of like, just clarity. I like, I can't even explain it. So Interesting. that's kind of like something I'm very interested in right now. I know that in the States, um, I think it's Oregon or, or, or is it? Yeah, no, it's definitely not California yet, but it, there's one state that has made it legal now to buy them. Um, and it'll, it'll be the next thing, right? So, you know, cannabis is legal in Canada now. And I think mushrooms and psilocybin is going to follow in the next few years. Mm, really interesting. I'll have to, so you take, mm. is it like a capsule that you took and you know, like, yeah. How long is it? Does the effect last for? Super right. Curious. Right. It's a supplement and in it is other mushrooms as well. So like reishi and lion's mane right. and cordyceps. Right. So it's not just the one type of uh, ingredient. Um, and it lasts about four hours. Mm -hmm. So what's, in, what's interesting with mushrooms is that if you take a higher amount of milligrams, it doesn't mean that it lasts longer, like five right. hours, 12 hours. Right. It just means that those four hours are more intense. Mm. So it's the same duration. It's just a different intensity, which is very cool. Right. Um, and so it's nice. Like if you wake up in the morning and you take a small amount, like I'm taking the smallest amount possible. Like I take 80 milligrams right now. Right. Um, and so 
it's nice to kind of get that boost for the morning. Um, and you know, there's just, there's some, there's studies coming out about how healthy it is, how it can help with mental health, a lot of like depression, anxiety, that sort of thing. I think a lot of like natural drugs have been vilified for years by our medical system. And it's nice to see the pushback coming and the reemergence of it. Mm -hmm. Um, Just like ayahuasca, like I think these powerful plant medicines really can be something great for people and can be life changing when used in appropriate settings and in a safe manner. Right. And it's really, as you said, it's really interesting to start to see people explore and have it be Mm. accepted. You know, how do you think, like, how do we get to a place? And this is something I've pondered on, like, how do we get to a place where it isn't stigmatized? Um, You know, Mm. there's, I think we're slowly starting to get that shift, but you still hear people like, oh, you did ayahuasca? Like, oh my goodness, you know? Yeah. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. It's like, what can we do in order to help people understand that it's an option for them uh, in the right circumstances? I think there's a, there's a lot to that. I think it has a lot to do with um, obviously the medical system vilifying yeah. things. Right. But I also think that it is becoming better. You know, the documentaries that come out, mm. the people post you on social media. And I think the more people post about it, the more we talk about it, the more we educate others about yeah. it, the more it becomes another tool that we can use. Mm. Um, I also think with this generation of millennials, I, you know, by the time that millennials were 60, 70 years old, I mean, we think so differently than boomers, right? And so I think there's a lot of judgment from older generations on these things. Yeah. And not necessarily Mm -hmm. because um, they don't know, but maybe because they grew up in a time when drugs were so bad, right? And that's all they're used to. And so they need to be educated as well. And I think it'll be interesting. Yeah. Like I said, like when millennials are are that age and what we're doing and how things have changed so much at that point. Right, right, right. Absolutely. Yeah. I can't wait to see. It's so exciting to see the shift. I can't wait to see where we are 10, 20, you know, 30 years from now. And, you know, especially with people's just consciousness expanding, um, you know, to these new modalities. What are some things, just curious, like, what are some things that you've done that you're like, you know, oh, this didn't really quite work for me, or like, I didn't really love mm. this experience. Like, are there things that you've encountered since you've tried so many cool things? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think there are some things like, oh, what comes to mind? Um, like, I used to intermittent fast for so long, mm. or for a few years, and it worked in the sense of like, it's really easy to maintain your weight if you intermittent fast, you know, Uh, and that type of thing. But what ended up happening was it caused a lot of hormonal issues for me. And so it backfired. And so, yeah. And so because they didn't know enough about intermittent fasting when I was doing it and it was such a new thing, I thought it was fine to be doing it how I was. Um, but it wasn't. And I had to, and I still am working on my hormones from that damage that I did for so long. So yeah. that's yeah. like intermittent fasting is so popular. It's, you know, very much linked in the biohacking world. But for me, that's not something that I promote with my clients if, if they're female, um, because it didn't work for me. And, and a lot of women have now come out saying, you know, I stopped getting my period, my period's irregular, I can't intermittent fast, like these different things have happened. So that is one of probably the most popular biohacks that I think we need to have more caution around as women. Mm, Interesting, because it is so popular. Everyone, I feel like Mm -hmm. everyone is talking about it, like everyone. (laughs) Yeah. And I yeah. did not know about the hormonal and that, you know, like we already have so many things that mimic hormones in our society. So then to add that yes. on top yes. of that is, you know, no good. Speaking of which, yes. you know, hormonal imbalance, that's something that I've struggled with myself. Um, mm-hmm. What are some of the common causes and, in, in, you know, maybe clients that you work with of their hormonal imbalance, uh, imbalances right. and what are some things that you work with them on, um, Mm. in order to try to help them Mm. to start to balance their, their hormones again. Yeah, definitely. So I see a lot of women who are coming off of birth control 
yeah. who aren't getting their periods and are worried because they're suddenly not getting their period. And, you know, they've been on birth control for 12 years and they thought that they could come off and everything would be okay. Right. Um, there's a lot of that scenario going on right now. Um, and then I see a lot of uh, PCOS, endometriosis, mm-hmm. other, in, other hormonal imbalances as well going on. Um, I think there's a lot of causes for that. Like, I think, again, like, I think it's, you know, lack of nutrient dense food, uh, lack of actually filtered clean water that doesn't have any birth control in the water, which we're finding. Um, Also, people are very stressed, right? So especially this year with COVID and everything that's going on, um, a lot of people aren't sleeping well, they're stressed, they're they're all over the place. They're overwhelmed. They can't see their friends and family and these different things. And so I think there's a lot to it and really it's different for every person. So it's interesting when I work with clients, because what could be causing your hormonal imbalance could be completely different to what's causing mine, even if we have the same symptoms, right? So there's no one size fits all. Um, And that's actually good. And it's nice that now the medical system and the healthcare professional world is moving towards this personalized approach of, okay, here's a health plan for you. That's only for you and nobody else, because you are so unique and this is what you need. And I think that's very, very cool. And I think we're going to see more and more of that uh, in the next five, 10 years. Mm, absolutely. The personalized care is so important. You know, you mentioned yes. birth control and this is one that I get into mm. debates with people all the yeah. time. <laughs> yeah. What are your thoughts? I've heard, you know, birth control is an incredible tool, you know, of, of course, yeah. for, you know, various reasons, but from a health perspective, for women, mm certain forms of birth control are really detrimental to your, to your hormones long-term. We'd love to hear your perspective from a, from a biohacking perspective, you know, kind yeah. of what you think. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, excluding any other circumstances right. when birth control can be necessary. Right. Um, I think it can be detrimental to your health. Mm. And, you know, I've heard people say, uh, there's no medical evidence that we need a period every month. Uh, it's fine to go on birth control. Yep. And it's like, what are you saying? Are you out of your mind? Like your period every month is like this beautiful thing that happens that is, shows you how healthy your body is right, right then. And right. 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 So the color of it, how much it is, your pain during it, your skin, all of your symptoms around it can be so indicative of deeper issues going on in your body. Mm. We need that. We need that sign every single month. Plus we need to ovulate. If you ever want to have a baby, you need to ovulate and release an egg and then have a period two weeks later. Um, I think it's so, so important. And, and I think yeah, I think millennials and, and younger generations are really waking up to that because mm-hmm. when I, so I was on birth control for seven years and I went off a few years ago um, and I was one of my first friends to go off and now everyone is coming off of it. Yeah. Everyone yeah. is like, I don't want to be on this. I don't, I don't like how it makes me feel. I feel like it's very trendy now to no longer use birth control or Mm -hmm. come off of it and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And I think that's awesome. I, I, assuming like you're being safe and everything else is taken care of. Um, I think that's a really good thing. And I, you know, it's just this idea of like putting synthetic hormones in your body every single day for years, years, and then coming out of it and being like, okay, where's my perfect period now? Oh, I want to get pregnant. Oh, let me try the first month after I've been on birth control for 12 years. It's not going to work. Yeah. So it doesn't, it doesn't work like that. Right. Right. I'm, you know, it's, I'm so, I wish we had more conversations like this about, so it's one of these Mm -hmm. things where I've tried, I tried to go on birth control once years ago for a week and I was like, no, 
I feel terrible. Like, I don't feel like myself. I feel like, you know, just my mood swings were so crazy. So it lasted about a week and I was like, absolutely not. This is just not going to work for me. So I love you said it's like, given, you know, there's certain circumstances for people and, you know, there's no judgment, of course, where it's the thing that makes the most sense in their life. I'm with you though. Like when I put something to my body and it's not helping me feel optimal and it's also synthetic mm-hmm. like my red flag is you know, the red yeah, alarms it's are going, like going off it's going, uh, you know I'm like yeah. mm, something about this and I just felt terrible so I've you know uh you know never that was I did one week and that was it like I never went out again um yeah and you know you're right it's like you see people for 12 you know 20 years they've been on birth control yeah. they're unable to get pregnant they have other issues down the line and mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's something that I don't think I'm just my personal experience, doctors, at least didn't educate me when they were trying to recommend birth control. It was more like, do this, do this, do this, do this versus like, okay, let's have a serious dialogue about how this will impact your mental health, your emotional health, your hormones down the line. And, you know, let's, let's talk through that and prepare you for that and make sure that you're aware of that before you make this decision. Anyway, that's a debate I can go on and talk about because there should be like more open conversations, you know, also about periods and periods being a time of feedback. I love that you said that, Yes. Um, you know, and treating it as, as data um, on your health and your body. So Mm. um, love, love, love that. Now, I, I know we're like running on time, which I can't believe it. I have so many questions for you. We could talk forever. Uh, One of the things I did want to make sure I asked you was just, you know, COVID, you know, as you were going mm. through this crazy time, um, you know, what are some of the things from a biohacking perspective, you know, to really make mm. sure that you're, you know, really optimizing how you feel given all the uncertainty and everything that's going on? Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's a tough question, right? Um, I don't have the answer. Like, I don't, I don't have this one thing that you can do that's going to just change how you feel. Right. Um, you know, for me, it's been difficult this year. Like, I, I think COVID has taught me how social I am mm. by taking away my socialization. Right. You know, and for me, it's been very hard. Like, men- well, my mental health because the things that I used to look forward to on the weekends, I can't really do anymore. And so it's forced me to create happiness and excitement in new ways. Mm -hmm. So I've had to really take responsibility for my mental health this year and well, my health in general, um, but more mental health this year than before and say, okay, I don't have what I normally have to rely on to feel good and relax and let go. Like what can I do differently? And I've explored different things. Like we just got a puppy, like I mentioned. Um, and a lot of getting the puppy was like, I need to take care of something. I need something to occupy my brain and right. not have me sitting on the couch watching Netflix every weekend because right. I have nothing else to do, right? So I think if you're looking for something you know, to biohack ha- managing COVID, I would really say like it's different for every single person but really take own, like take ownership of it um, yeah. and look into different ways to bring fun back into your life. Mm. So I think that's what COVID has done is I think it's taken a lot of fun away. Um, and now it's hard to bring fun back. Right. right. But right. we need that. We need that because we, we can't be go, go, go all the time. We can't be working 70 hour weeks just because there's nothing else to do. Exactly. Like, need to have this release and whether it's a pottery class or going for a jog in the woods more and like picking up running or something whatever it is like we need some sort of um release and I really encourage people to figure out what that is for you um and stick with it and use it as a tool again to help you optimize your health Mm, thank you for sharing that And, and congrats on the puppy by the way yay Oh yeah. <laughs> That's uh, awesome. Yeah. <laughs> now I know you're up to so many things. You've got some really cool mm. things that you're working on and you know, share yeah. you know, what you're working on, what you've got going on. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I so I see clients a lot. Um and I work with other health businesses too, which is very cool. So a lot of business to business work. But something very, very new that I've been thinking about. 
and working on is the idea of creating um, EMF blocking underwear for women. So I'm not sure how much you know about EMF, but there's new research coming out that shows how much it can impact ovulation, chances of miscarriages, uh, chances of impacting the health of your baby and all of these different types of things. Right. And like a couple months ago, I was sitting at my desk and I have my computers, I have my phone, there's a Wi-Fi router, like I'm in a, I'm in an apartment. So there's so much EMF right. around me. Right. Um, and I had a brand send me this like EMF blocking blanket and I was sitting with it on my lap and I was like, this is so impractical. Like if yeah. I had to go to an office right now and worked right. downtown, how would I work with a freaking yeah. blanket on the my blanket. lap? Like, <laughs> like here's my blankie coming into yeah. work. Yeah, they're like, great. <laughs> they're yeah. like, uh, who's right. this, who's this girl? <laughs> um, and then, so I started looking into the research and, and looking for underwear that can protect my ovaries. And there's yeah. like none out there. Interesting. And there's a bunch there's a bunch of underwear that's out there for men um, because there's more research for how it impacts sperm and testosterone for men. Right. But for women, there's not much. Yeah. And I'm like, well, where's the cute, sexy underwear that's healthy for my ovaries right. that right. I can wear every single right. day? Right. We need that. We need that I'm, right away. Like, I, I know. I didn't know. Like, Come on. Interesting. 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 Yeah. Because yeah, a blanket is, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like yeah. if you're in public and you know you're over a certain yeah. age people are gonna kind of like look at you yeah. weird. It's really yeah. great like underwear yeah to protect mm. your ovaries and you know I think yeah you don't realize you know we live in a in a time where there's more EMF than ever like we've never yes. lived in a time like this where you've got yourself yes. I look at myself now I've got my cell phone I've got two computers next to me like you know, <laughs> you know wi-fi yeah. signals your your everything's why you know wired my yes. um you yes. know earbuds are bluetooth and wired like everything so it's exactly yeah really interesting that's cool yeah. you'll have to keep us posted as you yeah. work and develop and, and create that yeah so i yeah i'm looking at different fabrics right now um i want to design a thong as the first product you know, because I just feel like, you know, I wear tights so much and little yeah. lemon so much. It's just yeah, impractical same. to like create like granny panties that are going to protect my ovaries. Like yeah. I need something actually I'm going to use. Yeah. So that's kind of what I'm playing with right now. And it's such a Love new, it. new avenue. I never thought I would make a physical product as part of my business. Mm -hmm. um, but here we are. And I think like some of the best products and businesses that come out are the ones that are solving problems that the person has themselves. Yes. Yep. And so because I care so much about my fertility and so much about regulating my period, the fact that my phone and computer could possibly impact the regulation of my period, I'm like, no, I need no. a solution. And right. so this might be my, my solution. I love it. You'll have to, when, when you've got, if you ever need testers feedback like yeah sure. models myself <laughs> you know <laughs> other yeah, people absolutely. rebellion will totally be that's that's also yeah. ability and hormones is something that you know I've mm -hmm. struggled with and you know continue to yeah. kind of work through so it's, you know any way you can help and support and yeah. do something proactive I think is really exactly. important really really important. exactly so cool yeah I think it's like I think it's one in every eight couples now experience this infertility. Wow. Wow. And that is yeah. like a growing stat. That is like, wow. that's scary. That's that so scary. So it it's, it's a big issue. And we don't talk about it enough. I, I think like there's, it's mm -hmm. like kind of like something that's hit, like this hidden yes. undercurrent. And yeah. it's funny, I finally got into a conversation about fertility with a bunch of girlfriends and just the, the vulnerable, honest, raw, mm. hard conversation about miscarriages or trying for years and being unable to get pregnant and all of the different things that people have to go through, yeah. um, yeah. you know, to be able to just give people that space to share, I think is, is really important. Um, and love yeah. that you're coming up with a solution to try to, you know, really help yeah. fix some of the problem and get people on the right course, which is cool. So yeah, exactly. Awesome. 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 We can't wait to check that out. Now, before oh, we go, thanks. where mm. can we find you online? 
Yeah. So my website is biohackingbrittany.com. Same with my Instagram um, and most of my social media handles. I also have a podcast called Biohacking with Brittany. You can check that out. Um, awesome. And if anyone has any health, health questions or, you know, wants to talk about EMF blocking underwear with me, like message me on Instagram and let's chat. I would love to talk about it and get some feedback and, and, or just help you with your health as well. Like that's what I'm here for. Um, yeah. Awesome. You're such a wealth of knowledge and absolutely. Oh, we'll link up you. to everything that you talked about in the show yeah. notes and, you know, reach out to Brittany audience. Like if you have questions, uh, please like go to, and your Instagram is yes. so awesome. You have so many great tips oh, and thank you. resources. Thank you. So, you know, definitely, definitely use Brittany as a resource. She's incredible. Absolutely. Awesome. Yes, absolutely. Thank yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thank you. I really appreciate this has been I, like literally my brain's exploding with all the new things I just learned from you. Uh, <laughs> I'm like, Ooh, I got to try this now. I got to get an aura ring, like all this cool stuff. That you yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you uh, so much. No worries. An honor and a pleasure. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. Of course. Thanks.